you are granted, if they're in a good mood one day, you can know a little bit more about how John F. Kennedy was murdered in 1963. You have an absolute moral right to know because you own it. I happen to think that the border is the single biggest issue. I think the border is a bigger issue than inflation. Somebody said, does you ramble? I said, I don't ramble. I do the weave. I cover many, many subjects. And you always come back to the right. That's genius. There's a difference between rambling and genius. <laughs> During the fireside chat, Trump also shared thoughts on potential figures in his future administration. Carlson asked whether Trump would have Kennedy and Elon Musk, um, and if they would be influential figures in his administration, Trump replied that he believes they will. The event also served as a fundraiser for Hurricane Helene relief. Trump or Harris? Yeah, Trump? Trump? Yeah. Trump? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For you, yeah, what's the biggest issue? What matters to you most? I think about in a women's rights, LGBTQ community. Trump or Harris? Trump? Can I ask what your biggest issue is? Or promote any preference? I'm a part of Jesus Christ. Talk with voters here. We've heard similar concerns. I'm not going with somebody just because he's Democrat or Republican. I need somebody that's going to help the people out. If, if you were to vote right now, who do you think it would be? Probably God. I, I'm not going. I'm not going to give who I'm, I'm going to vote because that's that's my not that's my option. But you know. It's be a better Meanwhile, the Trump campaign is seizing on the latest jobs report, which shows that only 12,000 jobs were created in October, and thus far below the original estimate of 120,000 jobs created, and is the lowest in four years. While the Trump campaign is accusing Vice President Harris's economic policies of, quote, wiping out 30,000 private sector jobs and nearly 50,000 manufacturing jobs, the Biden White House is stressing that these job losses stem from the recent deficit heavily across the state so where is georgia's 16 important electoral college votes going to go well we're here on the ground in georgia to get a read on which way the state will swing trump or harris ask us <laughs> trump or harris i don't know who you think they'll be trump. harris saying i don't really care harris trump trump or harris who's going to be trump oh yeah for you, what's the biggest issue? What matters to you most? This economy is what matters. Harris, I think about women's rights, LGBTQ community. Trump for Harris? Trump. 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 Can I ask what your biggest issue is? Lord for my money. Any preference? I prefer Jesus Christ. Talking with voters here, we've heard similar concerns across. And contribute to their 401k plans next year will now be $23,500. This also applies to 403Bs and the federal government's RIF savings plan. The RIF revision is part of the Internal Revenue Service's annual cost of living adjustment for pension plans and other retirement accounts, but the limit for IRA contributions will remain at $7,000. The additional $1,000 IRA catch-up contribution for people 50 and over will also remain the same. And October's jobs report ravaged by hurricanes and work stoppages. The U.S. added 12,000 jobs, while economists expected over 100,000. Analysts give us their take. Take a look. Job market's October's down. job report is hit by storms and strikes. Economists expected 100,000 added jobs. The Bureau of Labor Statistics found 1,200. In its words, <laughs> payroll employment was essentially unchanged. There's a little bit of maybe artificialness to some of those losses of jobs numbers. Analyst Aaron Serkina says the Boeing strike erased over 40,000 jobs from the numbers. <laughs> And it's showing signs of resolving. And hurricanes paused economic activity in the southeast. They might see some of those numbers pop back fairly quickly. But either way, the market seems to like it because it probably means an increased likelihood that we're going to see another uh, quarter point rate decrease at the next Fed meeting. Despite the distortions from bad weather... <laughs> ...and striking machinists... It actually gives consistent with the big picture, which is that the labor market is growing, but 
Chloe. ZipRecruiter chief economist Julia Pollock says in the past two quarters, Jobs job gains have been below the pre-pandemic average by about 100,000. This is a broad trend and it's the direct results of restrictive monetary policy delaying investments and causing employers to be more cautious about expanding and hiring. Pollock says the labor market might reheat as interest rates normalize, but there's no evidence that's happening yet. Interest rate has big things to do with and the sales John. of Google smartphones because of rules requiring locally made components. These rules require certain smartphones sold in Indonesia. To no tax on overtime. The people who work overtime are among the hardest working citizens in our country. And for too long, no one in Washington has been looking out for them. And one man will refuse to fall. So America and its workers can continue to stand great again. Right for America is responsible. Three or four years to inflation. You know, the, the chemicals we use, the bio, you know, the, the fertilizers, the sprays that we use. The harvesters went from like three hundred to five to six hundred thousand dollars. And what expectations do supporters of Vice President Kamala Harris have for a Harris Walls administration? Besides, with new Treasury securities being issued, many bought by foreign investors as domestic demand weakens. Meanwhile, economists warn the debt outlook remains uncertain. It isn't expected to stabilize by 2029. McDonald's reported a larger short of endorsing rival Hillary Clinton. It cited serious reservations about Clinton's suitability for the role. <laughs> so to come, the Supreme Court is expected uh, to decide the whether one, Virginia too. can remove hanging out of the garbage truck and speaking to reporters. The stunt comes after President Biden apparently referred to Trump supporters as garbage in a video call yesterday. The White House has clarified Biden's position. And Vice President Kamala Harris called on Americans to, quote, turn the page on the drama and the con. <laughs> President Trump responding to President Biden's comments that many are interpreting as referring to his supporters as garbage. This comes as both Trump and Harris are coming our home in battleground states. And to the weekend before the general election, he's hitting the streets, knocking on doors and ringing many doorbells. He was in Marietta Saturday working to get out the vote. Going home. Even if nobody's available to listen at every home. This is the life of a canvasser. Zamora says he hopes his efforts make an impact. I want to make sure that folks go and vote and um, elect someone that is going to represent um, the best interests. Zamora says this is his first time volunteering this election season, but says he has done this for about a decade. He's working with Mahente Pack. The group says it's the largest progressive Latino organization in the U.S. While this is a partisan canvas, Zamora has nonpartisan voter guides on hand. You need to know like where the candidates stand and then Hopefully people know where they stand and then they can make a well-informed choice. This canvas comes after a record-breaking early voting period in Georgia, where more than half of registered voters cast a ballot. The homes volunteers went to Saturday are those who didn't vote early in Cobb and Gwinnett, the Georgia counties with the largest Latino population. What we've seen is that people who uh, haven't voted in the past uh, need that extra push and that extra reminder of why it's so important. Zamora says he's doing this to be neighborly because he believes no matter who you vote for, you should at least do it. I think everyone should vote. This canvassing up the Border Patrol, by the way, five days ago endorsed me, which is something they're not even really supposed to do. And in endorsing me, they gave it a full-throated endorsement. But uh, and endorsed me. They, they said how horrible she is. And it's not easy for them to say that. You know, this is the vice president. And for round the clock original news coverage, watch us live at ntd.com. We are hungry. We saw it was our important. We want candidates who are able to support the things that are important to us. They don't want to vote because they realize or they think it's not going to matter. And as you just raised, you we are 22, 25% poverty rate. So they don't care and they won't vote because they don't think it's going to make a difference. And as you saw today in one of our meetings that we had here today at Mother's Nest, 
we had a speaker that talked the importance, and I myself tell them the importance of getting out and vote and by the show of hands and participation, they don't want to do it because they feel left out. They feel like nobody cares. In Bibb County, Georgia, 47,000 eligible voters apparently aren't casting ballots. That's four times the margin by which President Biden won the state in 2020. Many of these non-voters are struggling financially. Vice President Harris's candidacy may not be enough to motivate them to vote. At the Mother's Nest Baby Supply Organization in Macon, only six out of 30 women said they plan to vote. Executive Director Sabrina Friday says many are focused more on survival than elections. Bibb County never recovered all the jobs that it lost during the pandemic. Labor Department data shows it had more jobs in 2019 under President Donald Trump than it does now. Still to come, Secretary of State. Ignoring the fact that Bill Clinton was nominated there in 1992 and Jimmy Carter was nominated there in 1976 and again in 1980, and ignoring the history of the Democrat Party in the 1924 convention held in Madison Square Garden, attended by so many members of the Ku Klux Klan in white robes that they called it colloquially the Klan Bake because there were so many Klan members there. And for them to sort of bring up unpleasant associations with Madison Square Garden itself, I think is backfiring on their party and on their candidates. Bart Marcoy is former presidential campaign advisor 